Hello readers, I'm Gavi Driller and today we're reviewing The Hot War Fallout written by Harry Trudeau in 2016. So this is the second volume in the Hot War trilogy which covers what would have happened if the Korean War had gone nuclear. And this book takes place between June 1951 to May 1952, so about a year. And the reason that it's called Fallout is because we get to see the effects of nuclear weapons, radiation, on several of the characters in this book. So the highest ranking character is of course Harry Truman, the President of the United States, and he's thinking about should I run for re-election or not? Because he's unsure. This crisis has really gone badly and he's meeting with his different advisors, so he's met with Marshall quite often, he also met with Keenan, he's worried about the next election and if Joe McCarthy gets elected he thinks he's kind of a fascist and he decides to not try to get re-elected and he goes campaigning for some democrats and while he's out of Washington DC, the Russians, and this is from Boris Gripkov, decide we're gonna bomb Washington DC so Washington DC is nuked so a lot of congressmen are killed including Robert Taft um, Joe McCarthy and Harry Truman's family is dead so he, he looks a lot older on TV now and the character who dropped this bomb on Washington DC was Boris Gripkov the Soviet pilot and while he was resting after one of his missions, one of his crewmates, Leonid Sederbaum, I think, so he's Jewish and smart, he decides to kill himself because he feels guilty of having nuked Paris. So Boris Gripkov is not allowed to do a bunch of missions for a while. Then he is told to bomb Czechoslovakia where there is a Slovak uprising. So you start having different uprisings in the Eastern Bloc. I think you have uprisings in Czechoslovakia, in Hungary, and also in Poland. Man, Gripkov continues to fly his mission and nukes Washington DC and makes it out alive somehow. You've also got Konstantin Morozov, who's a Soviet tank commander, and he gets a bad tank, it blows up. One of the times he's in a tank, a nuke is dropped close to him, so he gets radiation sickness. One of his crew mates gets it really badly. He got on with his crew quite well actually, even if they were of different nationalities. But most of them recover and he goes back to tanks and a bunch of them blow up but he somehow survives. And you also got the Ukrainian Ihor Shevchenko who has been conscripted into the Red Army. He goes and he does his job of fighting the war and he's got a mean sergeant and after he witnesses the death of his friend who is on Azerbaijani I think. He decides he's had enough and shoots his sergeant in the back and is promoted to sergeant himself. And then he's sent off to Poland to fight off some Polish rebels. Back with the Hungarian People's Army, you've got Istvan Solovitz, who's a Hungarian Jew, and he's fighting quite well, but he eventually gets captured by the Americans and he is sent to POW camp where he's actually treated quite well. The Americans treat their prisoners quite well and he starts playing football. He actually beats up some Arrow Cross guy who befriends him, so that's weird seeing these Nazi guys kind of liking Jews. And he talks to some American officers, so it looks like they're gonna do something else with him. We'll see that in the next volume. On the other side, you've got Gustav Hossel, who is fighting for the Americans as a German, and he successfully gets a bunch of Soviet POWs to surrender. Eventually, Gustav Hossel is killed by a shell. And then we get the perspective of Rolf Mellon, the XSS guy, so I enjoyed reading about Gustav Hossel, it was an interesting perspective and now we get Rolf Mellon who is a more evil version of Gustav. In Korea you've got Kate Curtis who is fighting some trench warfare from time to time, got some skirmishes, you don't really have a lot of shooting between the Reds and the West and they throw propaganda at each other's sides and the main thing we see with Kate Curtis here is that he's uncomfortable with how the South Koreans treat their soldiers so he sees that the South Korean lieutenant yells at that of his soldiers and they're good fighters sure but one time the Korean lieutenant or captain or whatever he is decides to give the head of some enemy soldier that he cut off to Kate Curtis so kind of psychotic behavior from these South Koreans and that Korean continues to badly treat his soldiers so eventually Kate Curtis goes up to him and tells him off and he befriends kind of a Korean soldier who becomes known as Jimmy and he kind of joins the American GIs and he is summoned by a higher ranking officers for his behavior 
and because he doesn't back down he is allowed to return to the front so you've got a couple of scenes in this book where the soldiers they make their positions clear they don't back down from a higher ranking officer so they aren't really punished over in siberia you've got this vasily yasevich so he's been in china previously russian expat now he is in a russian village he works hard he's a good handyman another handyman who's lazy doesn't like him and he is threatened by them so he decides to beat the crap out of that guy to make his position clear so that guy backs off he also gives some opium to a mgb guy so now he kind of has a friend in the mgb which is good for him and he also rescues and he also helps a German woman who escaped from the Gulag and he passes her off to some old Jews so she's in safety so he's kind of a good guy Vasily Yasevich and we get to see him dealing with a bunch of different people so that's interesting if you remember Luisa Hossel she's the German wife of Gustav Hossel she is sent by the MGB to the Gulag in Siberia so that's not fun she's with her friend Trudel there also she is made to chop a bunch of wood and this is because she refuses to acquiesce to sleep with some other person so you've got a bunch of high-ranking lesbians there at the camp who could get her out of her problems or you've got some of the hair cutters those disgusting men they grope her and they tell her that if she collaborates with them then she will be taking out of this system of chopping down wood but she refuses she decides to keep her humanity and not prostitute herself but that means that she has to work hard and chop a bunch of wood down so a uh, prisoner horribly treated in the gulag system in england you've got daisy baxter she's running her bar and you've got a nuclear weapon that's dropped on it she escapes she gets radiation sickness friend bruce mcnulty the american air force guy he visits her regularly he kind of starts dating and she doesn't look that well after her radiation so it's kind of true love and they go out together, they dance together, sleep together. And after one of those times they sleep together, he goes out to E and while he's doing that, a shell falls on her. So she dies also. So a couple of people are dead in this book from shells. And in America, you got Marion Staley. So her husband is dead over in Asia. So she gets a bunch of money from the government. So she leaves Camp Nowhere and leaves Washington, I think, to go down and settle somewhere in California to some small town. She gets a job as a secretary. She doesn't like that there aren't any ambulances around for the woodmen who hurt themselves. So she starts a petition and gets ambulances sent to her small town. And Fabi Tabakman also moves there later after she sent a letter to him. So they are friends and we see how their relationship develops. And finally, you've got Aaron Finch, who's a hardworking American Jew. His car is stolen one time. His groceries are stolen, but he recuperates them. He argues with his family regularly. The Finches like to argue a lot in this book. And those are all the characters. So you get to experience in this book how radiation sickness affects a lot of people so we get to see much more the consequences of nuclear weapons in this book compared to the previous one so how would i rate the hot war fallout i would give it an 8 out of 10 but it's not as strong as an 8 as the previous one the previous one made a lot more interesting political points but this one still makes some good ones and the fallout effects of nuclear weapons are interesting some of the characters are pretty good we get to see them struggle with their inner demons there are some characters I don't really like how they act, so that's so. But otherwise it's good and it's interesting to see that Harry Truman is a honest president kind of. But he struggles with his mistake. So it's a good book, I recommend you to read it if you want to learn about the effects of nuclear war in the Korean War. And see how it could escalate and see the consequences of it. The first book is the escalation, the second is the consequences, so we see what the third one is. So this was the Avid Reader's review of the second volume of the Hot War, Fallout. It got an 8 out of 10. I hope you readers enjoyed this book review and I will see you readers next time.